This is lesson 5-4, which is solving radical equations. Our essential question <coughs> excuse me, is how can you solve equations that include radicals or rational exponents? Okay, so our example one, we're going to solve an equation with one radical. So for A, first thing we would do is we would add 1 to both sides. So that would give us square root of x plus 5 equals 4. Then when we have the radical isolated, we're going to undo that, which would be squaring both sides. So then that would give us x plus 5 on the left and 16 on the right. And then our last step would be to subtract 5 from both sides, so we get x equals 11. It's very important with solving radical equations that you plug your answer back in to check to make sure it works. So you would say 11 plus 5 minus 1 equals 3. So this would be, oops, got multiple equal signs going on there. So this would be square root of 16 minus 1 equals 3, which is 4 minus 1. So that works. So our answer is 11. Okay. On the next one, first step would be to subtract the 2 from both sides. So we get cube root of x equals 2. Then we cube both sides. So that would give us x equals 8. If we plug that back in, the cube root of 8 plus 2 equals 4. That works. So 8 is our solution. Okay, on example 3, this is now identifying extraneous solutions. So the first step here is you'll notice that the radical is already isolated on one side. So my very first step is going to be to square both sides. So I'm going to get 3x minus 2 equals, and then I need to foil the right-hand side. So it would be x squared minus 8x plus 16. Then because it's a quadratic, I'm going to get it all over to one side. So this would be... 0 equals x squared, be negative 11x, um, plus 18. So then that would be x minus 9 and x minus 2 if I factor it. So I would get 9 and 2 as a solution. However, if we were to plug back in, so if we plug 9 back in, so this would be 3 times 9 minus 2 equals 9 minus 4. So that would be 27 minus 2, which is the square root of 25. And then over here we get 5. Well, square root of 25 is 5, so that works. So 9 is a solution. But then if we do that same thing with 2, let's see what happens. So this would be the square root of 3 times 2 minus 2 equals 2 minus 4. So this would be 6 minus 2, which is the square root of 4. So when we're talking about these problems, we're, when we say the square root of 4, we're using the positive value, the primary value. So it would be 2 equals negative 2. And that is not true. So therefore, 2 is an extraneous solution. So part, part B asks, why is x equals 2 an extraneous solution? And why does this solution arise? So what you can see happens is when we solve a radical, we solve it by squaring to undo the radical. So this is the graph of our original equation, and you can see the only intersection point is 9, 9, 5. So 9 is our x value. However, if we graph the square of both sides, you'll notice we have two solutions. One of them is which, which was 2, 4. Um, that x value that we found is extraneous. So that is why we have extraneous solutions that pop up when we square both sides. So sometimes we have extra solutions that don't actually occur. Okay, example four. So now we're solving equations with rational exponents instead of radicals. So to undo a rational exponent, we want to raise both sides to the reciprocal of that exponent. So I'm going to raise this to 2 fifths, and I'm going to raise this to 2 fifths. So that's going to cancel the exponents on the left, so this would be x squared plus 5x plus 5, and we know 1 to any power is just 1. So 
and we get everything onto one side. So we have x squared plus 5x. That would be plus 4. We can factor that into x plus 1 and x plus 4. So our solutions would be negative 1 and negative 4. And then we always check to make sure that they work. So if we plug them back in, <clears throat> we want to make sure that both sides of the equations are equivalent. And for this one, they do both work. Okay. Part B. This one looks a little different. So you'll notice that we have different exponents. So um, we're going to want to get rid of the rational exponent. So we're going to start by raising both sides to two-thirds. So on the left, that will cancel, and we are left with x plus 18. On the right, if you have 3 raised to the 2 thirds power, or if you have something raised to the third power, raised to the 2 thirds power, remember the property is to multiply those exponents. So if I multiply 3 times 2 thirds, it just becomes 2. So this would be x minus 2 squared. So then we can factor or foil this out. So this would be x squared minus 4x plus 4. We can get everything onto the same side. So this would be x squared minus 5x minus 14. And then if we factor that, we get x minus 7 and x plus 2. So that would be our solutions would be 7 and negative 2. And then again, you check them. So plug them back into your original equation. Make sure that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side exactly. And 7 works, but 2, negative 2 does not. So negative 2 would be extraneous. Okay, and our last example is what do we do if, if we have multiple radicals in a problem? If there's a radical on both sides, it's super easy because they cancel each other out when you square both sides. However, this one's a little bit trickier. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get a radical on each side. So I'm going to add the square root of 2x. So this would be square root of x plus 9 equals the square root of 2x plus 3. Now we're going to square both sides. So this becomes just x plus 9. On the right, we're going to have to FOIL this. So if you think about... The square root of 2x squared would just become 2x. And then my middle terms would be 3 times the square root of 2x, but there's two of them, so it would be 6 square root of 2x, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so now I'm going to move everything on to the same side. So this would be 2x minus x, so it would just be x, and the 9s are going to cancel. So now we're getting closer. So now we only have one square root. So now I'm going to separate. I'm going to put the x back on the other side. So we have negative x equals 6 square root of 2x. And then I need to get rid of the square root. So I'm going to square both sides again. So this would become x squared. And this would become 36 times 2x or 72x. So then we get it all on the same side. If we found this, this would be x times x minus 72. So our solutions would be 0 and 72. Again, you want to plug those in to both sides to the original equation up here and make sure if you plug in 0 for all your x's, it equals 3, or if you plug in 72 for all your x's, it equals 3. So you will find that 0 works and 72 negative, or sorry, 72 does not. Okay, so that is how we solve equations with radicals.